This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Farm worker killed in car crash. One man is dead and another hospitalized after a motor vehicle collision along the Mirrensville Main Road in Westmoreland on Sunday, June 12. The dead man has been identified as 25-year-old Michael Blackwood, a farm worker of Rivertop Bluefields in the parish. Reports are that about 6.30 p.m., the driver of a Toyota Kingfish that was heading in the direction of Savannah Lamar lost the control of the vehicle and collided with a utility post. The driver was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital while the occupant died on the spot. The police and the fire brigade were summoned to the scene. The deceased friend, Denroy Mary, told the news that he is in disbelief. We can't believe him dead. He's supposed to fly out next week, he shared. Blackwood was due to depart the island for work in the United States in a matter of days. Two minutes ago, me and him just a talk about a function, only to get calls said this happened. A distraught Mary added. Another Clarendon school mourns as Jamaica loses 10 teachers in one month. The Pleasant Valley Primary and Infant School in Clarendon is mourning the passing of Yasmin Gordon, the tented teacher to die in Jamaica since May 11. Gordon, who worked in the infant department, died on Saturday morning. She had been ailing for some time, the news understands. Director of Region 7 within the Ministry of Education and Youth, Barrington Richardson, said the team is saddened, said the team is saddened at Gordon's death. It is never business as usual when we lose a colleague, a fellow educator who is making a difference in the lives of our students, Richardson said. Recounting the deaths of several educators over the last few weeks, Richardson said the region has been pushing lifestyle changes among teachers because our health is our business and also it is our wealth. We also have been encouraging all our principals to deliberately include health and wellness sessions, functions and activities that will treat with the psychosocial needs of all categories of staff, he said. Dozens of persons have paid a tribute since the school broke news of Gordon's passing on its Facebook page. Very sad, condolences to family, school family, friends and loved ones, SIP, said Leroy Neen. Rosalie Bryant said, no words, sigh, no words. Gordon, a mother of five children, was a pastor student of the Catholic College of Mandeville, Manchester. At least 10 teachers have died in the last four weeks, some of them suddenly. Jamaica Teachers Association President Winston Smith has urged his colleague educators to make taking care of themselves a priority. On May 17, after five teachers passed in quick succession, Education Minister Favel Williams said the deaths were a big shock to the education system. The teachers who have died since May 11 are Gregory Williams, a lecturer at the Portmore Community College, Antoinette Banton Ellis, principal of Vere Technical High School, and Marie Johnson Lindo, vice principal of Duncan's All Age School, Carlos Garden, teacher of One Way Preparatory School, Donna Lee Wright, teacher Tarrant High School, Amori Tomlinson, teacher at a school in Black River, St. Elizabeth, Jennifer Gidden, acting principal and the vice principal of Claremont High School, Dolores McFarlane, Discovery Bay All Age School, Shirley Pinnock, vice principal, Excelsior Primary and Infant School, and Yasmin Gordon, teacher, Pleasant Valley Primary and Infant School. JPS warns about fake subsidy scam. The Jamaica Public Service Company Limited is warning the public about a fake survey being circulated for about two weeks and which claims to be related to the JPS government subsidy. The online survey even has people claiming that they have won thousands of dollars just for participating. However, the light and the power company in an email alert has urged their customers not to participate in the survey. It is a scam. Please do not participate or share your personal information, JPS said. JPS has also urged their customers to stay alert and to continue to protect yourself online. JPS residential customers who are qualified to benefit from the government's copay subsidy on electricity bills started seeing the benefits on bills which have an invoice date of May 2022. It is part of the government's assistance program in light of rising oil and gas prices caused by the Ukraine-Russia war. The JPS has pointed out that increasing fuel costs 
have a direct effect on the cost of electricity as this is a major input in the production process. The government's assistance program runs from April to July 2022. JPS said customers should note that the process is automatic and does not require them to apply. All postpaid customers who use 200 kilowatt hours or less for the month of April received a 20% contribution shown on their May bill. The contribution appeared as a line item in the section labeled how your bill is calculated. Likewise, customers who use 200 kilowatt hours or less in the month of May will see their 20% contribution on their June bill. JPS residential prepaid customers will also be benefiting from this program as of May 2022. For more information, visit the JPS website at jpsco.com. U.S. Increasing Jamaican Extradition Request The U.S. Justice Department has increased its request for Jamaican fugitives wanted for serious crimes in that country, including lottery scamming, money laundering, kidnapping, and sex crimes. Over the last six weeks, nearly a dozen fugitives have been captured by Jamaica's counterterrorism and organized the crime investigations branch in various parishes. Several of the fugitives have since waived their right to fight their extradition and have been taken to the U.S. over the last three weeks. 30-year-old Greg Warren Clark of Mocha District, St. James, was recently extradited to stand the trial for mail and wire fraud relating to lottery scamming. Hanover-based auto parts dealer Alaric Grant, who is wanted for lottery scamming, was remanded last week when he appeared before the St. Andrew Parish Court and a 40-year-old Damon Oakley, a resident of St. James, is now in custody awaiting extradition for mail and wire fraud. Several others, including businessman St. Devon Cover and Dennis Rowe, has agreed to surrender to U.S. prosecutors to stand the trial on money laundering charges. University lecturer Russell McLean, who was arrested by CTOC detectives on May 24, has agreed to return to the U.S. to face a trial on charges of multiple counts of armed burglary, kidnapping, and sex crimes. Ward saddened by decision not to grant refugee status to wife sons of extradited Haitian official. Ambassador Curtis Ward, a former Jamaican representative at the United Nations Security Council, has expressed the disappointment with the decision of the Jamaican government not to grant asylum to the wife and the children of former Haitian Senator John Joseph who has been linked to last year's assassination of the president of Haiti. The Jamaican Ministry of National Security rejected an application to grant Mr. Joseph's wife and the two sons refugee status. They have since been deported to Haiti. Ambassador Ward, speaking with the news, said he deeply regretted that the mother and her children were not accorded refugee status, charging that the Jamaican government has not generally not been very kind to Haitians in relation to such matters, he cited the case of the former senator's wife and the children as a prime example of this. In contrast, he said ordinary Jamaicans have generally tried to shield them. The former Haitian senator and his family were found hiding in Jamaica last year following the assassination of Haitian President Hovenel Moise. Senator John Joseph has since been extradited to the United States. Police probing suspected bail racket the police are probing a suspected bail racket following the arrest and the charge of a woman by the Era 2 police last week. Keisha Braham, 42, a resident of a St. Catherine address, was charged on Thursday with uttering forged documents to bail a man accused of murder. Investigators alleged that on May 5, Ms. Braham went to the Porta Maria Court in St. Mary and submitted two bogus birth certificates to bail the man. Checks by the authorities reportedly revealed that the documents were forged. Ms. Abraham was arrested last Thursday and charged with forgery and uttering forged documents. Investigators are now trying to determine whether the fake documents were used to bail other persons. Ms. Abraham is booked to appear in court next week. Seven new firefighters recruited for St. Anne. The St. Anne Fire Department got a boost during May with the addition of seven new firefighters to the parish. This was revealed last Thursday at the monthly general meeting of the St. Anne Municipal Corporation when Senior Deputy Superintendent Anthony Hines, 
who is in charge of the Saint Anne Division, presented the fire report. The seven firefighters were part of a cadre of 83 recruits who graduated on May 21 after 13 weeks of training at the Majid Saunders Conference Center in Tower Isle, St. Mary. Citing the shortage of firefighters in St. Anne and St. Mary, Commissioner of the Jamaica Fire Brigade Stuart Beckford said that the two parishes will benefit from the majority of the new firefighters. It is unclear how many have been assigned to St. Mary. He said that another 100 recruits will be trained this year with a budget having already been approved. Meanwhile, May 2022 saw a reduction in fires in St. Anne compared to May 2021 with the figure falling 61 percent from 119 last year to 46 this year. Bush fires accounted for the majority of the fires with 24, while rubbish accounted for 7, motor vehicles 4, which resulted from traffic accidents, and the commercial buildings 3 being among the balance. The figures were contained in the report presented by Hines. Hines noted that all three fire stations in the parish St. Anne's Bay, Ocherius and the Brownstone were equipped with first responder units. The fire department continued its building inspection during the month with a total of 120 buildings being examined. These included 89 shelter facilities as the parish prepares for the hurricane season, 11 early childhood institutions, 5 schools, 2 hotels and guest houses. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.